Yep, that's correct. I have all of my content at my fingertips, thanks to a self-hosted feed aggregator known as Fresh RSS. You can see I have all of my favorite YouTube channels, podcasts, news articles, and more at my disposal, and you can too. So I'm going to show you how to set this up on a Udgreen NAS as well as on a Synology NAS. So let's get started. All right, I'm signed into the Ugreen NAS, and the first step we have to make sure is that Docker is installed on this device. Let's come over to the App Center. Let's search for Docker. As you can see, I already have it installed, but if this is the first installation for you, the button here will say Install. Go ahead and click that Install button to launch the easy to follow wizard. Once the installation has completed, you can close this window. The next thing I want you to do is come over to the file manager. You can see that the installation created a Docker folder under the shared area. We need to create a folder within the Docker folder to contain our settings. We'll call this folder config. And the reason for doing this is if for some reason the container becomes corrupt or has to be recreated, we have a copy of our settings stored locally on the NAS under the file station. Once the folder has been created, you can close out of this window. Next, let's go up to the main menu and let's launch the Docker application. Here we need to go out and find the image for fresh RSS. So click on the image tab on the left side, come over to the image database. Let's search for fresh RSS. And you can see we have a bunch of results. I'm going to go with the Linux server fresh RSS option. I'm going to come over to the right side and click the download link. Here I'm going to let it download the latest version and say confirm. You can see the image is being downloaded. Once the download has completed, the image should appear under the local images tab. And here it is. Next, let's come up to the container tab on the left side. Let's click new container manual creation. We're going to select the image that we just downloaded and say next. Under basic information, we have some things to look at here. You can give the container a name, set your CPU limit, your memory limit, and then you have the option of whether or not you want the container to restart automatically. It defaults to no. I'm going to say yes. So in the event that the NAS gets shut down abnormally, like it says here, and it reboots, the container will also automatically start up. Let's scroll down to the storage pool area, and you can see here, this is where we're going to map that folder that we created in the file station to the container directory. Again, if the container becomes corrupt or has to be recreated, we already will have our settings stored locally on the NAS. So let's click here, and we're going to go to Docker. And we're going to go to that config folder, select that. We're going to say confirm. And now you can see we've mapped the NAS directory folder to the container directory. Before we click done, let's go up to the network tab. We could leave the network mode as bridging. Let's come down to the port mapping. And we could see here that the NAS port that is chosen by default is 42847 to the container port 80. You can leave this as is if you'd like, or you can change this to something else. I'm going to just for simplicity's sake, change this to 6060. And before you click done, let's go up to the advanced tab. And we need to create two environment variables. We're going to add one for PUID and one for PGID just to set the permissions for the container. Now, in order to find the PUID and the PGID, you need to SSH into the NAS. So I'll show you how to do that. We need to come over to the control panel. Let's go over to the terminal. We need to first enable SSH and then say apply. Now I'm running a Mac, so I'm going to launch my terminal application. But if you're running Windows, you could use the PuTTY application. So here's how we SSH into the NAS. We're going to start by typing SSH and then your username, followed by the at sign and the IP address of the device. We're going to put in our password. And now we're successfully signed in to the command line of the Ugreen NAS. I'm going to clear the screen just using the clear command so it looks a little easier to read. And very simply, we're going to type the following command, ID and then hit return. 
You can see the results returned. It says UID equals 1000 for the user Tony Smeraldi and GID is equal to 10 for the group admin. So remember those numbers, yours may differ. So I have to remember 1000 and 10. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to quit the terminal app. If you're on Windows, you can get out of the PuTTY app. Remember to disable SSH for security reasons and say apply. Now let's close out of here and now we're back to our create container window and we're going to add the first environment variable of PUID. And for the value, that's for the user. So in my case, it was 1000. Yours may be different. And then for the PGID, I need to enter the value of 10. Once I have these two variables created, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say done. You see here it says run the container after it's created. I'm going to leave that checked. And if all goes well, we should see a successful container message and the container here should be running. Now to access the container, let's launch a new web browser window and let's type in the IP address of the NAS followed by the port that we set during the installation process. And now if we receive this web page, the installation web page for fresh RSS, we know that our container was created and there are no issues. So here we're going to select our language. For me, that will be English, but you could select yours from the drop down menu. Let's go ahead and say submit. If all looks good here on the checks page, which it does for me, we're going to click go to the next step. For the type of database, just for simplicity purposes, I'm going to leave it set to SQLite. And here we need to create a username and password. It needs to be seven characters minimum, the password. We're going to say submit. And it says, congratulations, the installation process was successful. Complete installation. And there you have it. So now we're just going to get signed in using the credentials we just created in the previous step. And there you can see we're successfully signed into Fresh RSS and it gives us a bunch of sample RSS feeds. All right, so let's get this set up now on the Synology NAS. And then the final step in this video will be showing you how to add your first RSS feed. All right, so I'm signed into my Synology now, and we're going to complete the installation of fresh RSS on the Synology side. It's going to be similar to what we did on the Ugreen side, but with a slight couple of differences. For example, it's not referred to as Docker on the Synology side. It's referred to as Container Manager. Just think of it as Docker with a few extra bells and whistles. So like we did before, we need to make sure that Container Manager is installed on this device. So we'll come up to the Package Manager. We're going to search for Container Manager. You can see I have Container Manager installed on this device. But if this is a first time installation for you, this will say install instead of open. Just click that install button to launch that easy to follow wizard. Once the installation is complete, you can go ahead and close this and then go over to that file station like we did previously on the Ugreen side. And you can see it did create that Docker folder. And we're going to go ahead and create a couple of folders inside here. The first one we're going to create is I'm going to call it fresh RSS. And I probably should have done this on the Ugreen side, but I did not. All I did was create a config folder. And we're going to do that now inside of the fresh RSS folder. And I'm going to call it config. And the reason for this is in case the container becomes corrupt or needs to be updated or it gets destroyed somehow, you have a copy of your settings stored locally on the NAS. Let's get out of here now. Go into the main menu and launch Container Manager. You can see we have no projects, no containers. So let's go ahead and say project create, give the project a name and I'll just call it fresh RSS. Why not? We're going to set the path now to that folder that we created here. Config select. We're not going to use upload Docker Compose. We're going to create a Docker Compose file and we're going to go out and get a sample file over at the Linux server.io website. Let's click on fleet. Let's search for fresh RSS. 
Let's click on that. Let's click on the link here. Let's scroll to the bottom of the page. And let's copy this Docker Compose code. And that's all we need to do at the Linux server IO site. We're back here. We're going to come into our area here and we're going to paste that Docker Compose file here. And there you go. Now we need to make a couple of changes. The first change I'm going to make is the time zone. Since I am on the East Coast, we're going to go with America, New York. And we need to change the PUID and the PGID like we did on the Ugreen side. But we're not going to do that just yet. I just hope I remember to come back to that. I do want to set the volume path so you can see we have a path on the left side of the colon and a path on the right side of the colon. This is the container directory to the right. We need to set the path to the config folder that we created in the file station on the left side. So let's launch the file station. Let's go to Docker. Let's go to Fresh RSS and let's right click on that config folder to get the properties. Let's go ahead and copy this right here. And let's come back in here now and let's just highlight everything to the left of the colon and then paste in our path that we just copied. Just like that. So you can see now that our fresh RSS forward slash config folder from the file station is now mapped to the container directory. So that's cool. Let's come over to the ports and let's change the port to the left of the colon. Since we use 6060 on the Ugreen, I'm going to use 7070 on the Synology. And then finally, we need to change our PUID and our PGID. Now, I showed you on the Ugreen that you could SSH into the Ugreen by enabling SSH in the control panel and then logging into the device's command line and running the ID command. You could do exactly the same thing here on the Synology side, but I'm going to show you yet another way that you don't have to go into the command line. Synology makes it easy for you. We're going to launch the control panel, go to task scheduler. We're going to create a scheduled task, user defined script. I'm going to call the task get IDs. You can call it whatever you want. Actually, I'm going to disable it here. We're going to come over to the task settings under where it says run command user defined script. I'm going to type in ID space greater than sign. And then we need to put the path in here and create a file name. So we're going to come back to the file station real quick. And let's just right click on the main Docker folder, go to properties and copy this right here. Copy. And let's just paste that in here and make sure there's a space between the greater than sign and the path and then another forward slash. And let's just give the file a name. So we'll call it IDs.txt. And we'll say OK. And now all I need to do is say get IDs, click run. Are you sure you want to run the following tasks? Say OK. If everything went well, we should be able to go into that Docker folder. And there is our text file. Let's open that. And here you can see the user ID. The UID is 1026 for the user Tony Smeraldi. And the group is 100. So as on the Ugreen side, it was different than it is on the Synology side. So just make note of whatever these are. A little simpler than going into the command line. So I got to remember 1026 and 100. All righty. So now that we have that, let's come back into here. We're going to change 1000 to 1026. And we're going to change 1000 for the group to 100. That should do it. Let's go ahead and say next. We're not going to set up the web portal. I'm going to say start the project once it's created. It's going out and pulling and hopefully if it pulls successfully, we should get an exit code of zero. I'm just copying the IP address and there we go. We have the exit code of zero, which is great. It successfully created the project and it is successfully running the container as you see here to access it like we did on the other side. We're just going to paste in the copied address 
I'm going to get rid of that forward slash and I'm going to use the port number 7070. All right, so here we have the installation page. Let's go ahead and say submit. The checks look okay. Go to the next step. I'm going to leave the database as SQLite, submit, and now I'm going to create my username and my password. Okay, it says installation successful. Congratulations. Let's click complete installation and now let's log in. And there you go, an exact replica of what we saw on the Ugreen side. All right, so we created the fresh RSS instance on the Ugreen as well as on the Synology. While the processes were similar, they did vary a bit. However, as you saw earlier, the result was exactly the same on both sides. Let's add our first RSS feed. Actually, we're at a YouTube channel, my channel, since adding YouTube is the easiest. Let's switch over to the computer. I'm on the Synology side now based on the port number 7070, but if I click on this tab, I'm on port number 6060, which is the Ugreen side. It really doesn't matter which side I do this on. So let's go ahead and add our first RSS feed, and that will be a YouTube channel. We're gonna come up to subscription management, and I'm gonna hit add a feed or category, and what I like to do is create my categories first. I have categories for YouTube channels. I have categories for podcasts. I have categories for technology news articles. So this way, when I add the feeds, they'll go into the appropriate categories. So that said, let's go back now and add a category or two. So I'm gonna add category for tech channels. And then you can see here we have our first category here. Let's add a second category, and I'll just call this podcasts. And we'll add our podcast channel as well. So now you can continue to add as many categories as you would like, depending on your organizational structure. I'm going to come up to the tech channels category, and I'm going to click on add an RSS feed. And we're going to come to this area here where it says add a feed. You can see it already by default chose the tech channels. I'm going to paste in my YouTube URL. And there you can see it says RSS feed Quick Tech Solutions has been added. If we come up to fresh RSS, you can see now under tech channels, Quick Tech Solutions, there are 15 feeds. And it's as simple as that. So if you'd like to see more content like this, please click that video on the screen and thank you so much for watching.